Well, hello and good morning, church. Pastor Kyle here. We're going to be continuing in our Bible reading together in the New Testament, starting a new book this morning, Book of Acts. And this is exciting. This is the where the, the foundation of the church is laid. Uh, this is a an incredible history of the early church. This is, in fact, the very beginning of church history, if you think about it. So when we talk about studying church history, we're talking about anything from you know, today that happened in, in, in the church all the way back to this point in uh, AD 30, 33, somewhere around there. So where we want to start here, obviously chapter one, the book is called The Acts of the Apostles. So we're talking about really the laying of the foundation and the work that the apostles did to begin to lay the foundation of starting the church. And in the very beginning, we hear the first account I composed, Theophilus, about all that Jesus began to do and teach. Now that ought to tell us something because Luke's gospel started with uh, that very same statement. I write this account to you of Theophilus, uh, who is a character, we don't exactly know who he is, but Luke is writing really what is a two-part history. So the gospel of Luke is part one and the book of Acts is part two. And we really see that here in chapter one as, uh, as Luke picks up right where the gospel leaves off. So we hear words of Jesus here uh, that he's re-recording um, here in verse 5, you know, uh, and he says, uh, you heard from me, uh, for John the baptized, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. He's predicting the helper, the Holy Spirit would come and initiate the church age. So when they'd come together, they were asking him, saying, Lord, is it... Uh, at this time, you are restoring the kingdom to Israel. And he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or the epochs in which the father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria and even to the remotest parts of the earth. This is so great because uh, Jesus is saying here, the ministry is going to start here. The revival is going to start in Jerusalem and then in Judea and Samaria, the surrounding areas, and then circle out to the whole world. So even though Jesus' ministry had started uh, you know, in uh, Galilee and uh, all through Samaria and Judah, and then into the Decapolis, the uh, Gentile cities around when the, uh, the, the Jewish leaders had rejected him as Messiah, he started sharing the gospel in those areas and there were converts. This is where the church would begin, in Jerusalem, with Peter's preaching uh, that we'll see in the next chapter. But Jesus promises, and, you know, they say, hey, is this where you're going to save the nation of Israel? And he says, you will receive power and you'll be my witnesses. So he's even sh still sh working on shifting their message from a political revival to the building of the church, which would then usher in eventually the uh, the kingdom uh, an everlasting kingdom, uh, even better than the one that they thought they wanted in a temporary kingdom, uh, a human kingdom. So then they, it says these things, after these things, he was lifted up and while they were looking on, a cloud received him out of their sight. So this is the ascension. We see this at the end of all the gospels. And then an angel shows up, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? This Jesus who've been taken up from you into heaven will come in just the same way. So we see a lot of stuff going on in here. Jesus setting the mission for the foundation of the church. This angel telling us how Jesus is going to return through the clouds exactly the way he was taken up. So some great, uh, great stuff here. And then it says they're in Jerusalem. They return. They go to the upper room uh, across from the Mount of, Ol uh, Mount of Olives. And um, when they had entered the city, they went up to the upper room where they were staying. This is Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, Simon, Judas, the son of James, these are the 11 that were left. And they were continually devoting themselves to prayer. Keep that in mind because we'll see that again in chapter 2. Continually devoting themselves to prayer, along with the women and Mary and the mother of James, or mother of Jesus, with his brothers. Uh, and then Peter gets up in the midst of the brethren and is talking about the ministry that they had been doing and the fact that there was one uh, who had been called. Uh, you know, it's talking about Judas, who became a guide for those arrested, uh, who arrested Jesus. It says, for we counted him among those who received a share in the ministry. 
Uh, now this man acquired a field with the price of the wickedness and falling headlong. Now this is some interesting stuff here. It's telling us more details after Judas betrays Jesus. He goes and hangs himself. Uh, the uh, the uh, rope snaps and he, he, he ends up uh, disemboweling in this, this field that he had bought uh, under the wall. So uh, it's, it's, it's saying that there's a prophecy being fulfilled here from the Psalms. Let his homestead be made desolate and let no one dwell in it and let another man take his office. So Peter's looking at that saying, see, Judas fulfilled that and we need to fulfill the rest. Let another man take his office. So there's this uh, accompanying passage here that talks about we've been there since the beginning. We, we've known since uh, John the Baptist and all of this that Jesus is coming and we've all been witness to his ministry. So let somebody come forward who has been a witness to the ministry of Jesus alongside us as much as possible so he can be an eyewitness. Because apostles, big A apostles, this is the commissioned uh, followers of Jesus who were sent ones, who were, who were ones who visibly saw his earthly ministry. So they, they choose two people, uh, uh, Joseph Barsabbas and, and uh, called Barsabbas and Matthias. They cast lots to see who's the Lord going to pick. And the lot falls to Matthias. So Matthias takes his place among the apostles, replaces Judas, who was the unfaithful one. And that kind of is the prelude setting the stage for what's going to happen in chapter 2, where Peter gives this great sermon and we see the foundation of the church happen. So that's, that's the beginning of the book of Acts. We're in a very exciting section of the Bible. I hope that's encouraging and exciting to you. I look forward to getting into the rest of the book with you. Uh, chapters two uh, and three the rest of this week. So have a good day and we'll see you tomorrow.